The appositive is a noun or a nominal phrase that renames another noun or nominal phrase that it is right next to in the sentence. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, we use appositives all the time uh, uh, in conversation, uh, even if we're, we're not aware of what they're called. Here's an example. My sister Sandora is singing. Now, if you look at this, uh, my sister, that's a nominal phrase, right? Uh, sister is the head noun and my is the, uh, the adjective there, uh, the possessive pronoun. But what is this Sandora doing there? It's not an adjective. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's bumping right against this noun, sister. Um, but it's not modifying it. I mean, now a noun is not modifying another noun. It's just two nouns that are equal. They are the same, uh, right next to each other. And that makes this an appositive. Uh, Sandora renames the noun phrase, my sister. My, San my sister is Sandora. It's like there's a little equal sign uh, between these two elements. Uh, my sister is Sandora. So, uh, Sandora is what we call an appositive. Now, appositives can be either restrictive or non-restrictive, just like lots of other elements in sentences. So, when you have an appositive, there's a question of whether the appositive should be surrounded by commas. Should it be set off by commas? Uh, and the answer in this particular case, my sister Sandora, depends on how many sisters you have. Because if you have one sister only, Sandora, then my sister completely identifies who you're talking about because you would say, my sister, who by the way is Sandora, uh, is singing. And if that were the case, then Sandora would be non-restrictive and you would put commas around it. But suppose you have uh, several sisters. Uh, so then you would say, my sister Sandora, as opposed to my sister Frida, is singing. Well now, uh, as opposed to is the sentence that would work, and this is the test I've uh, proposed uh, earlier in another video on restrictive and non-restrictive elements. Uh, and in that case, if you have a lot of sisters, uh, then there must not be any commas because you need the appositive Sandora to define which sister you're talking about. So appositives can be either restrictive or non-restrictive. Now, uh, I should say that the fact is that these one-word appositives, names, and these are, very, these are just about the only appositives we casually use in speech, uh, you only, only very picky people care whether you ever put commas around them or not. But with longer, uh, longer appositives, it is essential to make this distinction between restrictive and non-restrictive and to punctuate accordingly. Let's, let's take a look at uh, let's, a few more examples. Lincoln, our 16th president, was Turanian. Now, uh, Lincoln, our 16th president, uh, was Turanian. Now, our 16th president, and I've punctuated it in the, in the proper way. This is how you would uh, normally uh, uh, punctuate it. Um, because what other Lincolns would you be thinking about? Now, this, this, is, this may seem to contradict uh, something we've seen. If I just say Lincoln, have I defined who we're talking about? Because, of course, there are many people named Lincoln. Uh, if you say, and, and you might say that, well, therefore, our 16th president is restrictive. It's Lincoln, our 16th president, as opposed to Lincoln who lives down the street. But it doesn't work that way, because this is, this is the final thing I would add to this, this question of defining what's restrictive and what's non-restrictive. Uh, 
ask yourself, how, if I just begin a sentence, Lincoln, how many Lincolns are in play? That's the way I like to put it. Uh, that is, if you just start a conversation with somebody and say, you know, Lincoln would have done thus and so. How many Lincolns are in play? Well, if there's a, you know, if there happens to be a friend of yours named Lincoln uh, who's, uh, you know, standing down the hall or something, there may be some confusion. But basically, if I say Lincoln, there's only one Lincoln in play. Uh, there's only one Lincoln who is part of our general envelope of knowledge that we carry around with us uh, all the time. Uh, so Lincoln, who, by the way, was our 16th president, uh, was a Turanian. And so our 16th president, that is a nominal phrase, and it is also an appositive. Lincoln equals our 16th president. Um, now, let's, let's take a look also at this one. This is based on the, uh, the first sentence of James Joyce's The Dead. Lily, the caretaker's daughter, was very tired. Now, this is probably not correctly punctuated. Even though this is the first sentence of a, a short story, and you see Lily, and of course there are many people named Lily, uh, you actually don't need this to define who you're talking about, because how many Lilies are in play? If you open up a story, the first word is Lily, are you thinking about, well, is this the Lily uh, I'm reading about now, as opposed to the Lily that maybe is going to be introduced five pages from now? No, of course not. There's only one Lily in play. Uh, so it's Lily, comma, the caretaker's daughter, and this is the appositive, and it's a non-restrictive appositive, was very tired. Now, the, but the only way this could be different would be if there really were two Lilies in play. If you were saying, for example, Lily, the caretaker's daughter, was very tired, but Lily, the farmer's daughter, was very perky. In that particular situation, in that sentence, then indeed, the caretaker's daughter would be restrictive and would therefore not be set off with commas because you're distinguishing between two lilies. But that would be a very unusual situation uh, and, and normally, indeed, you would uh, punctuate it this way because if you begin a story that says Lily, the caretaker's daughter, there's only one Lily in play, and the caretaker's daughter is going to be a non-restrictive appositive, and therefore is going to be set off with commas.